Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is December 11, 2016. This is the third Sunday of Advent. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-323-7508. Next Sunday, the 18th of December, is our cantata at the 1030 service. Springfield, Ohio. This is December the 11th, the third Sunday of Advent. We are looking forward to Jesus' birth. We're celebrating the birth of Jesus on the 25th of December. We're also looking forward to the second coming of Jesus. We're preparing ourselves for Jesus' second coming. The King Shall Come, written by John Brown Brownlee, lived 1859 to 1925. This is an Advent hymn. The King Shall Come, morning dawns. Look forward to Jesus' second coming, his return.
Coffin uh, have uh, lit the Advent candle three uh, Sundays, the two purple and one pink. Kim Jackson will be doing the reading this morning.
and the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the Holy Way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even the fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon him. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion and sing it. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Good. See, 
I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has risen greater than John the Baptist, yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Some announcements to share with you, first of all, of course, immediately following the service, we will dismiss to the fellowship hall, have a light lunch, and then have our annual congregational meeting. So I hope uh, that you're planning on staying with us for this important meeting. Also, I've been asked to remind you of the need to uh, turn in your poinsettia orders. Uh, also, the angel tree gifts, rainbow table gifts, are due tomorrow. Uh, and on the front pew, once again, we have silent sheets for uh, reader and worship assistant and communion assistant for January, February, and March. So, following the service, we ask that uh, before you go downstairs, if you're interested in signing for any of those, please do so. <coughs> now I ask that you give your attention to the choir.
may now take out your sermon notes for our sermon today. As we look at the 11th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew and consider the question, are you offended? Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we roll into this third Sunday of Advent, this season of preparation for the coming of Jesus, preparing both for his returning glory and also preparing to celebrate when he came the first time in humility, being born in that stable and placed in a manger in Bethlehem because there was no room for him in the end. We are confronted with a somewhat strange question in our gospel lesson today, and that is, are you offended by Jesus? Are you offended by Jesus? The reason that question comes about is because of how our gospel lesson begins. We read that John the Baptist is in prison. He's been in prison for almost a year. He's in prison because he continually condemned King Herod Antipas and his wife for their violating the law of Moses by committing adultery. You see, Herod Antipas had gone to Rome to see his brother. And on that visit, he became smitten by his brother's wife. And so he convinced his brother's wife to leave his brother and to come back to Galilee with him and to become his wife. Well, of course, that under Jewish law, it was forbidden for you to marry your brother's wife unless your brother had passed away. So under Jewish law, they were committed to adultery. And John the Baptist took every opportunity he had to remind the people of Galilee that King Herod and his wife Herodias were adulterers and that the judgment of God was going to be upon them. So Herodias especially finally got fed up with John airing their dirty linen constantly in the public eye. So she convinced Herod to arrest John. So John's now in prison and he is hearing about Jesus whom he assumed was the Messiah. When he baptized him in the River Jordan, he was convinced that Jesus was the Messiah. But now that he's been in prison and he's hearing about what Jesus is doing, he is somewhat confused. So he sends his disciples to Jesus to ask this question. Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? And with that question comes the possibility of being offended by Jesus. Now, how would you be offended by Jesus? Well, first of all, we have to understand that one of our first, or the first lesson we learn from our gospel lesson today is that <laughs> some people never trust or accept Jesus Christ as Savior. No matter how much evidence there is, they will not trust Jesus Christ as Savior. John the Baptist was having that problem. You remember John talked about that the one following him was going to come with a winnowing fork in his hand. He was ready to separate the wheat from the chaff. John the Baptist was expecting Jesus to preach hellfire and damnation, not to preach about love turning the other cheek and praying for those who persecute you and to give your cloak as well as your coat if somebody asks for it or if they ask you to go one mile to go with them two miles in John's mind who at that point probably filled with depression and despair that he has been in prison so long he wants Jesus to be showing a little more militancy he wants Jesus to be attacking as he attacked. And so Jesus tells his disciples, well, tell John what you see. The blinds have their sight, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the lepers are cleansed, the dead are raised, and the good news is preached to the poor. 
These were all parts of the prophecy of Isaiah hundreds of years before when talking about the Messiah. But by the time of Jesus, the prophecies about the Messiah had been twisted to turn the Messiah into a military hero. Someone like King David. Someone who would defeat all the enemies of Israel and reestablish the glory of Israel under David and Saul. And so they're offended by the fact that Jesus is home, that Jesus is meek, that Jesus is not confronting the Romans or King Herod and, and those who would cooperate with the Romans. They're disappointed that Jesus is not more nationalistic and proclaiming Israel over everyone. And so they're offended. Now before we go further, what does this word offended mean? Or offense, as it's recorded in your reading and your insert. When Jesus says, blessed is anyone who takes no offense. This word means to be scandalized. So Jesus is asking, are you scandalized by me? It means to cause someone to stumble. That is to stumble over an idea. So many people in Jesus' day thought that the Messiah was going to be this militant warrior, so they're stumbling over the idea of Messiah now, because Jesus isn't fitting that role. It means to trap someone. It means to cause them to fall away, to have doubt, to be discouraged, to judge and fear. There are those who are offended scandalized by Jesus. There are those who stumble over Jesus. There are those who fall away from Jesus when they discover who he really is. There are those who have doubts about Jesus or are discouraged about Jesus or judge him unfavorably because he does not fit the nice little package that they decided he should be. Some reject him because he does not raise up an army. He does not have a militant army that goes around conquering people with a slogan, convert or die. But instead, he preaches to ordinary people, inviting them to feed on the bread of life. Others, and I have talked to such people, are offended by him because of his claim that you need him in order to have salvation. To them, the idea of having someone die for their sins is scandalous. To them, the idea that one person shedding blood on a cross pays a debt of sin that they own makes no sense. They'll tell me. They'll say, well, I'm a good person. I give to charity. I don't cheat my employer or I don't cheat my employees, depending on their position. I don't take advantage of people. I try to live right. So why do I need someone to die to pay for my sins? See, such people believe in works righteousness. They believe they can earn salvation. They believe they can do enough to bargain with God when they face Him after they leave this earth. But Jesus comes along and says, no one can enter into the Father except you. Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus says that the Father sent him to, into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And so there are those who just never trust that promise, that never trust that state. And so they are scandalized. Or they doubt, or they're discouraged. So that is the first group that are offended by Jesus. Then we have the second lesson our gospel teaches us this morning. And that is some join the church and then become offended by Jesus. Now, no, at first stating that seems somewhat odd. Why would someone join the church and then become offended at Jesus? After all, the church is Jesus. If there's no Jesus, there's no church. But this is what happens. Some people join the church with a mistaken idea that 
that by joining the church, everything in life will now go right. Their desires of the flesh will be fulfilled. Their greediness will be fulfilled. Their want of material things will be fulfilled. No one will be sick. No one will suffer. No one will be disappointed. No one will suffer through trial and tribulation. And of course, this comes from those false preachers who take the gospel of Jesus and twist it into a material gospel and try to make these claims that if you just do this and do that, you'll have all the material things you want. Some of you may remember a popular preacher in the 60s and 70s and into the 80s out of New York who would tell you that if you just sent $25 or whatever it was for his prayer shawl and ordered his prayer shawl and got it, and then when you went to pray and put that prayer shawl on you, that you'd get whatever you want. And he would have people testify about how they bought his prayer shawl, and now they had not just one Cadillac, -like, they had two Cadillacs. Or they had gone from having no job to now having a $50,000 job and all their bills were paid and they were getting ready to buy a big fancy house in the Hamptons. And life looked terrific. And what did Jesus tell us? Jesus told us to not to base our life on material things. He told us not to base our life on that which moth and rust destroy and thieves bring in instead but instead to base our life on treasures in heaven where moth and rust could not destroy and thieves not bring in steam. So people like that who enter the church with that misconception, they become offended when Jesus says things like, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Put others first. If you have a lot, be sure and share it with those who have nothing. They don't want to hear that. And so they're offended. They're scandalized. They stumble. They fall away. They're discouraged. They judge unfavorable Jesus' message of putting God first and caring about our brothers and sisters. So because they don't want to deny themselves, take up the cross, they drop out. Or then there are those who join the church and after a while their friends start giving them a hard time about being a Christian and constantly baiting them, constantly testing them on, on their faith. They finally decide that their friends are more important than Jesus. They're offended that Jesus makes them turn their back on all these things their friends are doing, the desires of the flesh, satisfaction of greed in the flesh. And so they drop out. They become offended at Jesus because instead of Jesus saying, let the good times roll, let's just eat, drink, and be merry, Jesus calls us to discipleship, to imitate him. To be like him to our neighbors and to one another. <clears throat> and so they drop out. So they were offended by Jesus Christ. Then we come to those who are not offended by Jesus Christ, the community of faith. And because they are not offended, they are declared blessed. Again, as Jesus says in verse 6, and blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. That word blessed or blessed means to be fully satisfied. It means to be fully satisfied by God, to have God's kingdom in your heart, to have spiritual tranquility. So that is what we are when we are not offended by Jesus. By believing in Jesus, we receive the grace that is needed to face all the circumstances of life, all the trials and tragedies and tribulations that may come upon us. This is why St. Paul could write so boldly in the fourth chapter of his letter to the Philippians. I know how to be brought low, and I know how to abandon. In any 
any and every circumstance. I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance of need. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. I can do all things through Him who strengthens me. That word strengthen means to make effective, to handle something, to be empowered to face something or go through something, to enable, to enable you to face the difficulties of life. So those who believe in Jesus and not offended by him are blessed in that we are given this grace so that we can face these difficulties of life. As St. Paul says, he's been through it all. He's been high, he's been low, he's been hungry, he's had abundance. He's been rich, he's been poor. Through it all, he could make it through Christ who strengthens him. And so we who are blessed, for us Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So he is either a person's Savior or he is nothing. There's no half and half in Jesus. There's no, I believe in Jesus as a good teacher. Does he know good? I believe Jesus is a prophet. And that long line of prophets, that doesn't do any good. I believe that Jesus is another great ancient philosopher or moral teacher. Like the other great philosophers and moral teachers of the ancients. That does he know good. Jesus Christ is singular. You're saved, or you're offended by it, and it's gone. So as the community of faith, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. His life, his teaching, and his actions witness to who he is. His life, his teaching, and his actions witness to who he is. So then the decision is ours to make. Does Jesus Christ offend you? Or do you embrace him as Lord and sin? The choice is ours to make. Amen. <coughs> Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds to Christ Jesus. Let us now sing this spirit sends us forth to serve hymn number 551 at the back of your worship. Hymn number 551. <laughs> Dolores Duffer, U-F-N-E-R, was born in 1939. It's the Spirit sends us forth to serve. We're blessed by the Spirit, Jesus Christ, and His life. We are to follow Him, and He calls us forth to serve.
faith in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Time for the offering. Gus and Connie Singleton are the ushers today. This is the 11th of December, the third Sunday of Advent, as we're preparing the way of the Lord, we're preparing to receive him as a little child born in a manger who lived with us, lived with human beings, became one with us, truly man and truly God, Prince of Peace. We're celebrating this as the Advent season and we're preparing for his second coming when Jesus will come back again, as he said. The flowers on the altar today are presented by Les and Cindy Pearson in memory of Bill DeSellum's birthday and also by Pastor and Gina and uh, family in honor of grandson Victor's sixth birthday. We invite you to come Christmas Eve to worship with us, 24th, and we invite you to come any Lord's Day. On Christmas Day, we're going to have a service at 10 o'clock in the morning, but we usually have 8 o'clock service, and we usually have the 10.30 service, and you're watching the 10.30 service now on YouTube. We are not offended by Jesus Christ as he died for our sins. He did not come as a palace, a person in a palace, but in a manger. And he speaks to us to love him, to accept him as our savior, and to care for the poor, and the widows, and the orphans, and the strangers. Turn to page 219 in the front of your worship book, and by those who can do so without difficulty, please. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sunday uh, for that uh, performance, but also that you invite family members and friends to join us as the choir uh, gives us the Christmas message through song. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, Holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, and draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, Amen. on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We conclude our worship with hymn number 267, Joy to the Lord. Hymn number 200. 67. Our closing hymn is Joy to the World, written by Isaac Watts, who lived 1674 to 1748. 300 years ago, Isaac Watts wrote this hymn. It's a hymn of joy. Hymns before this were songs. Isaac Watts was a brilliant father of English humanology. He lived in the 1700s and wrote this hymn, Joy to the World.
body above our altar and he is prophet, priest, and king. He came into the world and he lived among us, truly man and truly God. He is our brother. We're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus has done this for us. This is God's way of salvation. Salvation belongs to our God. And he has given us salvation through Jesus. And we can be with him every day. Thank you for watching St. John's on YouTube. Tune in anytime. Our services are at 8 o'clock and 10.30 every Sunday. And we have 6.30 worship in the chapel where we receive Holy Communion, the body and blood of Christ. We, uh, you may call at any time. Find any information about membership, joining our church, come worship with us. Or if you're unable to come in person, watch us on YouTube. Tune in anytime. Heck, when I pray that God will continue to bless you this day and all your days. We pray for you. Continue to pray for us. Join us on Christmas Eve for our Christmas Eve services. We have two, one at 6.30 and one at, uh, I believe it's 9 o'clock, so it's later in the evening. You can call the church office to check the time of the Christmas Eve services. We're welcome to have you anytime worshiping with us. We thank you for watching. We hope that you will accept Jesus Christ into your heart that you will honor him for his sacrifice and ask him to be with you every day to help you receive the joy of salvation as he came to earth as a little child in Bethlehem. We celebrate this on December the 25th and we're also preparing for his second coming. This is the Advent season, the third Sunday of Advent, December the 11th, 2016.